All right, so here's part two of the, the unit two progress check. All right, so we have the, the gases CO2 and NH3 that can be liquefied at 20 degrees Celsius by compressing them. A student claims that NH3 gas can be liquefied at a lower pressure than CO2 can be liquefied. So um, the difference between NH3 and CO2 is CO2 is a, a nonpolar molecule. It has symmetry, so it only has one in dispersion forces, but NH3 is a polar molecule. It's a trigonal pyramidal. So um, letter D, CO2 is a nonpolar molecule that has London dispersion that are weaker than the dipole-dipole London dispersion forces between the polar and H3 molecules. So it's letter D. Number 15. So the graph above shows how a particular real gas deviates from ideal behavior at very high pressures. Based on this information, which of the following is most likely the gas that gives a reason based on kinetic molecular theory? So deviation from the ideal gas law, either the, the particles have to have a, a strong interaction, so stronger intermolecular forces, or larger particles, especially at higher pressures, will deviate more because of the, the volume part. So one, one um, assumption is that the particles don't, uh, don't have any volume, but at higher pressures, the volume of the particles become significant larger particles, it's even more significant. And you can see that at the high pressure on this graph here, that there's a significant difference between the real gas and the ideal gas. So we wanna be looking for the largest gas out of these choices. So letter D, SO2, because it has the largest molecular volume. It's just the biggest particle of the, of the four choices. Number 16. What volume of a 0.1 molar HCl stock solution should be used to prepare 250 milliliters of a 0.025 molar HCl? This is a dilution problem. So here's the work right here. This is the equation that we use for dilutions, where uh, the ones are your concentrated side, the twos are your dilute side. We're solving for V1 in this problem, so we can plug in the information that's given in the problem, divide to solve for V1, and we get 62.5 milliliters. So that's going to be, okay, so that's going to be letter C for number 16. Okay, next. Uh, a 500 milliliter aqueous solution of Na3PO4, here's a smaller mass, was prepared, prepared using 82 grams of the solute. What's the molarity of Na3PO4 in the resulting solution? So for number 17, we're using this equation right here, moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So going back to the problem, to get moles of solute, it would be 82 grams divided by 164. Um, that's 0.5, it's, it's half a mole. And then divide by the, the volume. So it's 500 milliliters, so that's gonna be 0.5 liters. So it ends up being 0.5 mole divided by 0.5 liters. So it's just gonna be one molar, letter D. Question 18, how many grams of NaCl with this molar mass right here are needed to prepare 100 milliliters of a 0.25 molar NaCl, NaCl solution? So going back to my uh, work page here. Here's the equation for molarity, moles of solute divided by liters of solution. We wanna solve for moles and then convert to grams. So rearrange the equation to solve for moles, it's molarity times liters. That gets you your number of moles, and then multiply by the molar mass, 58, to get 1.5 grams. So that one's letter D. Number 19. When methanol and water are mixed together, they form a homogeneous mixture. Based on the information in the table above, which of the following would be the best procedure for separating a mixture of methanol and water? All right, when you have a mixture of two different liquids, um, if they have different boiling points, distillation is a good choice. So letter B, um, you would boil off the lower boiling point methanol and the water would stay behind. So distillation is what you'd want to use. Question 20, which of the following methods is most appropriate to use uh, to determine the number of different colored components in a sample of black ink? So when you want to get a, a when you have a, a bunch of different colored components, you usually want to try a paper chromatography with different solvents to get them to, get, to separate. So letter D is the answer. 
Okay, these are uh, chromatograms, so paper chromatography. So we see the different solvents that are being used. It doesn't identify them, but it's just asking them. So we have these uh, thin layer chromatograms of the same mixture of two compounds. So based on the chromatograms, which solvent would be most effective at separating the two compounds in the same stationary phases used for column chromatography? Well, it, it only shows that solvent C is where we're getting a significant separation between those two. So that's what we want to have. So letter C. 22, methanol uh, dissolves completely in water to form a solution that does not conduct electricity. Which of the following diagrams best shows the major type of attractive force that exists between the particles in the solution? So methanol has hydrogen bonding because of that OH, and water also has hydrogen bonding. So we want a diagram that shows hydrogen bonding between the CH3OH molecule and an H2O molecule. That's not it. We would want to have the H connected to, to this part of that molecule. This is also not it. This is showing H3O. We, want, we just want water molecules. Uh, letter C would be the choice. It would be the positive hydrogen connected to the negative, the partial negative oxygen in the methanol. This has the oxygens connected to each other. Those are the negative ends. Those are the partial negative ends of, of each of those molecules. So they're not going to be attracted. We always want to have positive attracted to the negative. So H to O in the different molecules. So letter C. 23. So we have a graph of mass of unknown solid added to conductivity. And we have this linear relationship right here. So a student adds a one gram sample of an unknown brittle solid to distilled water, stirs the mixture, and then measures its conductivity. The student repeats this procedure with more samples of the unknown solid and then produces the graph above. Which of the following statements about the graph and the properties of the solid are correct? So as we dissolve more of the solid, it's more conductive. So it's something that's producing charged particles in solution. So the increase in conductivity indicates that an unknown is an ionic solid that dissociated into dissociates into ions when it dissolves in water. Letter A is the correct choice. 'Which of the diagrams above best reps represents the interactions that are responsible for the relatively large solubility of KCl crystals in water and why? Okay, so the concept behind this, you want to know how ionic solids dissolve. Um, the ions will separate and then they're surrounded by the water molecules with this ion dipole uh, bond between them, ion dipole force. So it's the ion connected to the dipole of the water molecules. So it's always going to be the positive ions attracted to the oxygen end of the water molecule, positive to negative, and the negative ions attracted to the hydrogen end, negative to positive. This shows the KCl ions staying together. That's not what ionic solids do in solution. The ions will separate. So diagram one is better because a strong ion dipole interactions between KCl and water help to dissociate the solute. So it's letter A. <clears throat> uh, 25. Which of the following best explain what, what happens as photons of visible light absorbed by dye molecule? All right, so this um, question is referring to this part of the 3.11 notes. So it's talking about, um, go back here, it's talking about visible light is being absorbed, okay? So going back to this, if we absorb visible radiation, it's associated with transition in electronic energy levels. So we wanna look for the answer that's referring to energy levels. So certain electrons in the dye molecules move to higher energy levels. So that's the one that we want to pick. Okay. Uh, the other ones are talking about um, vibrational states or rotational states. Uh, that's the other types of radiation. So it's just letter A is the answer. Okay. Question number 26. The infrared spectrum above represents the absorption of certain wavelengths of radiation by molecules of CO2. 
Which of the following best explains what occurs at the molecular level as a CO2 molecule absorbs photons of infrared? Okay, now it's back to that same section of notes. This is talking about infrared radiation. So infrared radiation is associated with molecular vibrational levels. So now we want to go back to our choices and look for vibrational levels. The atoms of CO2 molecules increase their vibration. So that's going to be the answer, letter A. That's the only one that deals with vibrational levels. So the answer is A. 27. Okay, so it has this alcohol and a carbonyl group. Okay. One type of organic molecule can be converted to another type of organic molecule through an oxidation reduction process. As represented in the diagram above, which of the following best explains why infrared spectroscopy is an appropriate method to confirm that the product contains a carbonyl? Okay, the only thing you have to worry about right here, it's talking about infrared radiation. Okay, so again, we go back to that section of notes, and infrared radiation deals with molecular vibrational levels. Okay, so all that other stuff is irrelevant. We're just looking for vibrational levels. So infrared, this is talking about energy levels, infrared. This is talking about vibrational levels right there. So the answer is going to be letter B. 28. Electromagnetic radiation with a maximum wavelength of 540 nanometers is needed in the study of photoelectric effect in potassium atoms. What's the approximate frequency? Okay, looking at my work page, number 28. Uh, it's right there. We're using the, the speed of light equation, solving for frequency. And we get 5.6 times 10 to the 14th. So now we go back to our choices. Uh, letter D, 5.6 times 10 to the 14th. 29. Uh, now we have a frequency of 7 times 10 to the 14th. We want to find the energy. Okay, so again, going back to the work page. Energy is Planck's constant times frequency. Uh, by the way, these equations are on your green sheet. And, and the constants for the speed of light and Planck's constant. So we, now we multiply those two together and you get 5 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So letter A, 5 times 10 to the negative 19th. Question 30. The frequency and energy ranges of photons in some parts of the electromagnetic spectrum are given in the table above. Which of the following could be the energy of a photon in the visible range? So in the, the spectrum, visible is between UV and infrared. So it's just asking about the the possible energy so it's going to be in between those two so 4 times 10 to the negative 19th is in between those two ranges so the only answer in that range is letter C okay 31 the absorption spectrum of a certain red dye is shown above if a student analyzing the same concentration of this dye neglected to wipe fingerprints off the cuvette, cuvette before placing it in the spectral photometer how would the absorption curve be affected? Well, if the cuvette is not clean, that means the light will not be transmitted as well. So all these readings would be too high. So the peak of the curve would be higher because more light would be absorbed. The whole curve would be higher, but yeah, definitely the peak also. So letter A. 32. A student measures the absorbance of a solution containing F ESCN positive 2 using a spectral photometer. The cuvette used by the student has two frosted walls and two transparent walls. So what happens is the student incorrectly orients the cuvette so that the path of the light is through the frosted sides of the cuvette. So that means that more light will be absorbed. The absorption should be too high. So the measured absorbance uh, would be higher than the actual absorbance because the cuvette was improperly lined up. So letter B. And question 33, another spectral photometer question. So with this one, uh, you rinse the cuvette with distilled water. The student adds a blue dye solution to the cuvette, and they forget to rinse the cuvette with the blue dye solution first. So the student places the cuvette in the spectral photometer and measures the absorbance. So there are some distilled water droplets left over. How would that affect the absorbance? It would be too low because the, the concentration would be too low. 
So measured absorbance would be too low because the distilled water would be slightly dilute. So letter A.